welcome back to my so-called clean room so the holidays have ended and i'm back to reality of being a functional adult and when i came back the room was well post existential crisis it was horrible um it looked like i was living in a i don't know a, a garbage hole um it <laughs> And I kind of cleaned up most of the stuff when I came back because I was like, I'm ready to beat, beat the devil out of it. Out of 2019, in a good way. So, as you can see in this two bad boys, there's probably clothes and a lot of clothes. And in my wardrobe that I'll show you, which is very small, but there is clothes there too. And it currently looks like this. <clears throat> yep, uh, you see my closet. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? I bet you aren't. For those of you who's actually still going through your existential crisis, you're not alone and you will eventually find the sweet spot for it. <laughs> I look much more presentable. Um, well, let's get started. I'm gonna lay out all my clothes on my bed and then I'm going to separate it into three pals. And then I'm gonna do the ones that I'm gonna keep, the ones that I'm unsure about, and the one that needs to leave. During my existential crisis, which was a few months ago, um, I had gotten this book by Mark Manson. And I can definitely see why it's the number one international bestseller. Because it's like those horoscopes you read and then you're kind of like... Yeah, yeah. It almost applies in general to a lot of things and everyone. I read this after my post-existential crisis. Don't ask why I didn't read it during, because... Because I have more important demons to deal with. <laughs> and I think one thing that kind of stood out, it goes along the line of, this book will not teach you how to gain or achieve, but rather how to lose and let go. It will teach you to take inventory of your life and scrub out all but the most important items. Although I say it to you guys or anyone who's watching you might be like yeah it's common sense i know that or you might be like yeah you know i should be doing it and then you end up not doing it um it's really at the point where you come to realize by yourself that like when it clicks you know when it clicks and you're like oh banana that's so true you know and i want to do it i want to change because no matter I always say this, that like, no matter how much someone says something to you and wants you to take their advice, you're not going to unless kind of just you understanding it in your own idea, in your own words of what it means to you. So I hope you will and you will find that sweet spot in for now, just join me on this post-existential crisis of cleaning my closet. I think my biggest reason is that I keep stuff and I'm like, but I'm gonna wear it later or I'm gonna have the occasion to wear it later and I never have the occasion to wear it later because I never go to occasions, so... Wow, Christina, does this spark joy? No. Does, but the thing is, what about what if I need to wear it? Does this spark joy? To be honest, I don't like how it fit in on me. It's just like, eh. So no, it does not spark joy. Next. That's really so. Does this spark joy? Yes. Star Wars t-shirt. I love this shirt. Keep. Keep. Keep workout clothes. Yes. 
and my mom didn't allow me. <laughs> this, who just not like a little with that and green? Eventually, and that's the stuff I'm donating. I think I'll probably have to show the final product sometime tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, geez.